Mm, that's drunk. Way back in March of 2016, I made a video that went over every single Super Nintendo and Super Famicom game, and when it came to Super Baseball Simulator 1000, I biffed it. I called the game a pretty good pickup if you're looking for something basic. Hey, I was right about the game being a pretty good pickup, but this game is not something basic. It has some very interesting stuff going for it that vault it from being just another baseball game to one that stands out from the pack, the same way games like Super Baseball 2020 and Base Wars for NES do. Like many other games with titles that start with the word Super, Super Baseball Simulator 1000 is a sequel to the NES game Baseball Simulator 1000, and it was made by Culture Brain in July of 1991, and both those games do themselves zero favors with such a bad title. Neither of these games are baseball sims, in case you're wondering, and as you can see, this game has a big time, early Super Nintendo vibe. The visuals and sound here were never going to be the selling point of this game. It looks like a very slight upgrade over the NES game which was pretty common at the time, especially when it came to sports games. Culture Brain also made stuff like Super Ninja Boy and Ultimate Fighter, and those games also look dated and clunky. I mean, good for Culture Brain to have a consistent vibe, but it's safe to say that graphics weren't their strong suit. The thing is, though, this game does play reasonably well. I mean, it's no Ken Griffey Jr. Presents Major League Baseball, but it's still solid. The user interface is mostly straightforward, and both hitting and pitching are really about what you'd expect if you've played any other baseball game from this era. Nothing spectacular, just the fundamentals done well, so the game at its core is easily accessible. It definitely helps that the game cuts a quick pace, and there's not a whole lot of waiting around between pitches or anything like that. You can complete a 9 inning game in something like 10 to 15 minutes. The only issue with the basics here is that the fielding sucks. Every fielder in this game is so freaking slow. This is one of those baseball games where everyone moves all at once, like RBI Baseball, and in addition, nobody other than a pitcher is capable of throwing a ball more than 20 feet without bouncing it to a base or the cutoff man or whoever. I mean, geez, it's like every fielder turns into Chuck Knobloch when they have to throw. There's also tons of inexplicable errors every game, but at least you have the option of turning those off. But all of that is just the normal game mode, stuff you'd find in any old baseball game. The big appeal of Super Baseball Sim 1000 is playing as the Ultra teams, and that's what I missed out on in that previous video. If you select a team from the Ultra League, the third group of teams on the menu, then you can press the X button during the game to activate that player's special power, with the number being that player's rating with that particular power. What makes this great is that there's so many different powers out there. There's 15 for batting, 20 for pitching, and even 4 for field. There's the usual stuff like the extra strength to crush the ball or a fire effect to throw a fastball, but there's also this effect that turns the ball into a missile, where upon contact, the ball will go on a straight line drive straight to the wall, taking out anyone who's in its way. Now that's funny. A lot of the effects screw with the fielding, which is just as well since the fielding sucks anyway. One makes you throw even worse than Chuck Knobloch could. There's one that knocks fielders senseless, one that makes the ball disappear, and pitching has some great stuff too, like the leaf here that makes your ball float as well as Bugs Bunny's patented slow ball. One, two, three strikes, you're out! Sadly, it still only counts as one strike, but it's pretty funny how you can just hack away at the ball as many times as you want while it's still hanging in the air. Another great thing this game has going for it is the season mode. It comes complete with a battery save and season stats, and you can pick anywhere from 5 games to 165 games. And you can also customize your own league, where you can mix ultra teams with regular teams if you'd like. And it even lets you pick a different ballpark for each squad. Now, normally, for all the special powers, you're given an allocated number of points for each game, which makes you pick your spots with when you want to use them. That's all well and good, but the game allows you to select unlimited as an option, so you're able to use the points anytime you damn well please. It's great, and that's the best way to play this game. So yeah, I made this video as a mea culpa. Despite the horrendous title, Super Baseball Simulator 1000 is really a lot of fun as long as you're not expecting this game to be anywhere close to being a baseball sim. Unless you're actually simulating magic powers, I guess? This game is a lot closer to something like Base Wars. It's silly and ridiculous, and yeah, the game is definitely clunky and rough around the edges, but if you start with a custom league with unlimited points for every team, then this game is a great time. And hey, if you dig this one, there's a ton of sequels too. Just search for the Ultra Baseball Jitsu Maben games and you'll find more of what you see here. It's well worth it. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.